so as you rightly mentioned i have uh, 10 plus years of experience in product management and uh, i started my career as a pm with uh, redbus then worked in uh, different uh, product streams like b2b and b2c and then moved to book my show southeast asia where i was taking care of uh, southeast asian uh, uh, region for launching book my show in that region and then after that i joined zivame and i worked there uh, as a lead product manager for around 3 years and post that i recently moved to tripadvisor where i'm leading the uh, vacation rental uh, business that's brief about me and my passions include uh, 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 product management and uh, trying to uh, build some new frameworks and try to uh, do some case studies on product management and uh, share it with wider audience yeah great um so i think now we can move to the q and a session so if any one of you want to ask any question you can go ahead or i'll ask a few which i have with me right now um sure hi hi shikhar amrit here uh, i'm i'm a growth manager currently and i wanted to understand the role of a product manager new initiatives uh and how does it overlap with the growth manager's role uh, you know and how easy it is being a non technical person to transition into product management okay uh thanks amrit so basically there are two questions that you asked one is uh, uh how does a transition between uh, a growth manager to a product manager specifically new initiatives happen and what is overlap second is uh, for a non technical person what does it take to move to product management am i right yeah great so i'll try to answer the second question first and then uh, come up with the first part so um, product management basically is an overlap of three functions first one is uh, understanding the user's pain point or understanding the consumer so it requires a lot of empathy and uh, soft skills which are needed to uh, empathize the consumer's pain point need and come up with a solution so that's one uh, area which i think uh, uh, it doesn't de- depend on the technical know how of the product the second uh, uh, skill that is needed in product management is obviously the uh, technical jobs because uh, any consumer uh, insight or consumer pain point that you find out would want to solve that and to solve that mostly you would want you would want to build a uh, digital product uh physical products are uh, are, uh, are are the are the passive now you mostly need to build digital products for building digital products obviously yes you need to have some kind of understanding a very basic understanding of how the uh, website or an app functions to give you an example uh, uh if you understand how uh, a data is being passed from one end to another end from the consumer side and how is it being received to the uh, organization and again passed back that simple flow workflow if you can understand that is enough uh, one live example is myself i am a basically a chemical engineer i have uh, never coded i have never written a uh, line of code in my life but uh, i could transition into product management only because i could uh, uh, just understand the basic nuances of how uh, technology works and uh, that's how i could make the shift and the third part is apart from the consumer empathy and the technical skills the third part is the business skills it is about how do you um, how, how do you evaluate a business what is the value proposition what is the revenue and the cost of acquiring a customer so these are certain certain terms that you needed to understand and to make sense of the decision since we are already uh, in the growth management team we are already aware of the business uh, part of it and uh, consumer empathy would uh, come as you Uh, uh as you as you step into a product management role and uh, technical chops technical chops is something that you could uh, pick up uh, very quickly uh, that's the answer for the second part the first part i think growth manager to product management it is a very easy jump or a very easy move or a logical extension i would say because as a uh, growth manager uh, you are responsible for the acquisition so you are getting visitors and converting them as customers yeah and uh, basically growth manager does a handshake with the product manager so growth manager will bring the visitors to the website or the app and the product manager takes over from there and converts those visitors to customers by converting them so he's responsible for the cr the conversion rate part of it and the growth manager is the uh, step above it 
So in that sense, if you see, actually it is a logical conversion, logical extension, and it uh, is an easier uh, step. Okay, so thank you. Clarifies my doubt. Yeah. Yes, you can go ahead. Hi, Shikhar. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Uh, so the major question that comes to my mind is so i'm a I'm, i come from a non technical background as such mm -hmm. and as you mentioned before that you were a chemical engineer before and then you transitioned towards product management right. uh, the transition of you helping an engineering team or building a trust between these people so how was that journey how how a non technical person could do that and is building trust really that easy can you just elaborate on that? Sure, definitely. So, so this is the uh, difficult part that most of the books or uh, uh, don't answer. Like, how do you build that trust? So, I'll tell what I've done. Maybe you could take a few points from that. So, initially, since I have uh, very less knowledge on the tech uh, technical side of it, I was pretty open and honest with my engineers. And uh, when you are honest and uh, open for uh, feedback and you are conveying that you want to learn then the engineers will definitely empathize with you they will try to uh, share in your uh, share their insights or how the system works and slowly once you get the confidence that's how the, uh, uh, you reciprocate by uh, uh, reciprocate uh, when you mean let's say move on to the next organization you keep on uh, uh, adding learning more about it and uh, when you are transparent i think that uh, automatically builds uh, some trust and when you when you when you build that trust and you try to put some uh, positive effort toward the direction that you're actually trying to learn uh, that it builds even more trust and over a period of time you'll overcome it and you will uh, have sufficient uh, knowledge to uh, bridge that gap so in the initial stage i would obviously say that uh, be very transparent be open and uh, be receptive to the feedback uh, then, ev then then everyone would be willing to share knowledge and bring you to their speed. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, one continuation to that is currently I'm a management associate. So I essentially act like a project manager in our startup. So I deal with a lot of teams. I deal with a lot of people. However, for, for me to, you know, uh, take the next step, at least be an associate product manager or, or that, that, uh, product space, the, that technical guy, uh, you, what are the basic skills that I should start with now, as of today, I hate coding. I don't, you know, I've tried it, I've done it, but I just don't like it. Like I've, I've been sitting in front of a computer. I still do that. However, UX really interests me just for an example. So I like sitting in front of Figma. I like doing wireframes. I li love doing, uh, you know, from balsamic or, you know, creating those things. So do you think that making one core expertise and then moving being a manager is better or do you think that you have to have all three areas at a top level and then transition towards being a manager so i think that's a very uh, fair question uh, so we should always play to our strengths in the initial uh, phase of our career because yeah. uh, we can't be master of all the three areas that is ux ui uh, business and tech and obviously, uh, when you say UX UI, it also includes uh, understanding users' pain point and uh, mm. empathizing. Them. So you should always play to your strength. So when you're talking to any other counterparts, let be let, let it be technical uh, engineers or analysts, you bring your strength to the table, yeah. not uh, your weaknesses. So you uh, you talk to the talk to the team members like what is that you are trying to drive across. And uh, you're trying to bring everyone to the same page and moving the team forward. And at the level of a APM, associate or assistant mm -hmm. product manager, the main skill that is required is execution. Because at this, uh, at the initial level, you are measured or you are op you are uh, assessed based on how good you are at uh, shipping the products. Yeah. So when you're uh, when you're responsible for shipping the product, it is important that you. Uh, act as a good uh, uh, project support manager, system. support mm. system, and also as a project manager, less of product 
uh, initially per se because you're trying to absorb what the senior products or the PMs are trying to say, what is the, um, uh, if I have to put it in a better way, let's say there are uh, three stages of product management. Let's say the uh, senior PM and PM and uh, assistant product manager. Mm. So the senior P- PMs are responsible for the why. Why is it uh, Why is it that we do we need to build a feature, like a yeah. high-level strategy? And then the PMs are responsible for the what. What of like what are they uh, executing? Uh, this is one more one level deeper. Uh, they are basically specifying uh, specifying the product requirements, PRDs, writing the PRDs and the features. And then comes the APMs who are executing on how how is this getting done? Uh, mm-hmm. Especially coordinating with the engineers, design, UX, analytics, and pushing pushing it sprint after sprint. So yeah. as you move forward in your career, you try to answer one question at a time from how to what to why. So every, every juncture is important because uh, at the Y level, if you're not, if you do not know how is it getting executed, you'll never completely uh, empathize or uh, you'll never be a good uh, senior product manager. So take up, enjoy this role of uh, how to get this executed. So team management and um, um, working with different teams. Yeah. Uh, that's really, really important. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, one more question. I'm sorry if I'm asking multiple questions. Uh, this question might be a bit personal. Like, when was the first? Uh, you when was your first product product role, mm-hmm. and when did you start? So it was in, in the year 2014. I think uh, back then uh, there were not enough product managers in India. Yeah. So correct. so the situation was uh, if you could get anyone who's decently comfortable in uh, numerical analysis and could mm-hmm. talk to his customers and uh, is a good project manager mm-hmm. would be roped in as a PM. So that's how I joined. And it, as I told, my strengths are in, in, in uh, understanding the user's pain point and uh, doing numerical skills and data analysis and t- gathering insights. I would share this insight with the engineers and I would tell them like how this or what, what I'm, what I have in my mind as an idea, how will it, help in uh, reducing the pain point of the end user, be it uh, bus ticket, uh, 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 be it a travel agent or a bus operator. How is it solving their day-to-day life? Mm. So that's how I used to weave the story um, and sell the story to my engineers. Yeah. Meanwhile, while they're developing it, I would try to pick up like what is it that they're trying to do? How are they, uh, what is the architecture design? How is the data flowing from here and there? That's how I slowly started to get uh, inputs from them. I, I, so the product product role, I started in 2014 itself, but uh, mm. I didn't knew specifically like what product, product management meant. Um, so... That's how it, it has started through all experiments and uh, failed experiments and then mm. some successful experiments and I learned. Even uh, writing the PRD was there was no specific template back then. Yeah, correct. So we used to write, uh, I used to write uh, uh, in an email, like what is the expectation? No. Then slowly. Uh, but don't slowly you think that turn- would have been a bit of an issue like when it comes to mm-hmm. communication? Uh, mm-hmm for you to build PRDs and everything as such at that time, Mm -hmm. uh, you, you took it as a learning or you took it as something that you could make it better. I took it as a a learning, um, because even the engineers did not understand or did not, uh, completely understand how a PRD looks like. So that was the situation back then. So I, uh, I took some best practices of what was happening uh, across the world and, uh, I had good, some good managers from whom I picked up and from other, other companies were trying to do uh, product management and slowly uh, formed a system. Uh, so it was uh, more of uh, do it yourself, uh, PM, that uh, uh, PM skills that I, I did in the initial one, one and a half year. And after that, uh, it got fairly uh, templatized from uh, yeah. my system again, but whenever I mo- made a move to book my show again, it was different book my show had uh, their own set of uh, product management, uh, product management, thinking processes, etc. So yeah. that's how I could uh, understand and get even more uh, understand the best practices. But mm-hmm. if you see right now, I think most of the best practices are outlined. Uh, the how 
is being already been defined mm-hmm. uh, i think it it's the matter of uh, taking it head on and uh, experiencing it uh, that is uh, what is required and the temperament uh, emotional temperament that you could do mm-hmm. uh, to to stay the course that's all is needed i mean one continuation like in terms of uh, the same question now you told that you've been working through a lot of companies as such and that's how you learned mm-hmm. so rather than a course do you think that doing internships working mm-hmm. on product companies would that would that be better mm. no that would not be better in my opinion because see you should you should ship a product a product and at least a, a few features yourself so to ship a few to ship few features it is important that you are um, not on the why stage of writing a prds or uh, but at the how stage of how are you getting the prd live into the actual website or the app so that will obviously mean that you need to talk to a lot of people in engineering design testing analytics marketing and other content other people and pushing the product live and then taking the feedback of once you push the product live so only once you do the initial grind of uh, shipping few products then only you'll realize this life cycle of product management in internship i don't think see if, if the internship is actually providing the end to end opportunity or the time frame to ship few features then great but if you're not actually getting the time of shipping the entire feature no then yeah. uh, you'll only see half the picture correct 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 makes sense i'm done thank you thanks we have a question in chat it's by a dg expert mm-hmm. uh, so the question is is job hopping still a taboo nowadays for pms let's say if someone has changed four jobs in span of 6 years all right i think it's not a taboo uh what is your past work doesn't uh, should not uh, affect your present work see in this age of uh, hyper scale growth startups and companies which are scaling in one and a half years or one year on let's say even six months if you can actually spend two or three good quarters and are able to ship a product or uh, release some good features that it, that itself is uh, enough so one quarter in a startup is equivalent to Two to three years in an old economy company, in my opinion. So uh, the fra- the the time duration that you work in uh, uh, in your previous companies should not in any way affect your future. Now. Okay. Uh, so anybody else has any questions? Okay, so yes. i have a question that i got in the registration form the question is by chintan he is asking how to learn the metrics of deciding pricing of a product when you are the first one among your competitors to create a product all right okay this is uh, this is fairly Uh, high level question but i'll try to give some pointers of how can you solve this problem so there are multiple ways of pricing a product one is in the cost based you know what is the cost that you're incurring for uh, shipping one uh, physical product or something like that so you do cost plus margin and do the pricing per product or per item uh, if it is a uh, if it is a as based product or uh, something which is digital product where there is no physical product then it is different in that what you do is you try to see what is the cost of acquisition that you are uh, incurring uh, for a user and uh, cost of acquisition and then you, what you try to do is uh, you try to add some uh, margin around it and then price a product uh, these are the two ways that you initially try to uh, price a product but as you have more data once you uh, initially launch the product and you are you are seeing some traction around the uh, product then what to do is obviously try to do some kind of experiment the ideal way actually is to have a product where uh, pricing where you take into consideration the li- lifetime value of a customer 
what is the lifetime value that you could get from a customer you subtract that from the cost of acquiring that leaves you margin and that's the secret sauce like of uh, pricing a product you decide what is the margin that you're comfortable at if you're a good growth stage you might be at 0% uh, margin or even sometimes minus discount uh, you can provide and if you're at a late stage you could add some margin percentage and you could uh, start the price but never price your product based on competition Thank you, Shekhar. Uh, we have another question from Chandan. Mm -hmm. He's asking how good you have to be at analytics. How does it affect product management? Right. I think analytics is again a very important uh, skill that a product manager have should have. One I've told is consumer empathy. The uh, right side being uh, left or right, I think I don't forgot, but one side where it is creative side. The other side is to be have uh, analytical bent of mind. See, because uh, the as a product manager, you are not sure of what you are building unless you have shipped the product and taken the feedback from the consumers. So, let's say the feedback is negative that the users are not liking it, then you should be able to quantify it. Like, why are the users not liking the feature that I've built or my product that I've built, and try to make the changes and do one more experimentation or release it. So as you see, product management is a uh, is a never ending process of experimentation. You do a lot of experiments to figure out what is the best feature, best product that you could build and uh, see which one clicks. And once you see that there's a feature that is being liked, then you double down and try to improve upon that feature. Now, these are all uh, uh, numerically led uh, decisions where you need to have uh, a good understanding of uh, uh, analytics and then base your decision on that. Uh, as, as a PM, you don't have infinite amount of time or resources. You have limited technical or energy uh, engineering bandwidth or design bandwidth. So obviously you cannot keep on playing or doing multiple experiments on, until you figure out. So whatever experiments that you choose also needs to be, uh, needs to have a, a solid scientific backing. Why do you, why are you doing this experiment? Or why do you think this feature will do good? If this feature is doing, if this feature does good, what is the uptake that you see? It could be in terms of revenue or in terms of conversion. So you should have some uh, analytical bent of mind uh, to be a good product manager. Okay, thank you. Um... So uh, there's another question by Ashwin. Uh, he's asking, uh, what are the skills required from business side for a PM? See, from a business point of view, there are a few skills that you need to understand. So when I say business, it's basically the, um, the founders or the management. When they, uh, obviously everyone in the uh, management or the founder, they are basically there to uh, grow the business to achieve uh, profitability, uh, to have a long runway of the business. So there are certain business objectives which the uh, upper management has. So those business objectives have to be met. At the same time, you need to ensure that your consumer is also liking your product. So as a product manager, it is important that you solve a consumer's pain point profitably so that the consumer is happy and the business is happy. So for the business point of view, it is important that just treat the business as one more consumer that you need to satisfy. One consumer is the actual end user. The other consumer is the internal consumer. That is your upper management or your senior uh, founders or co-founders who are having some kind of uh, business objectives or KRA set by them. So you take into consideration uh, those objectives. That's it. I think if you try to align with the business objectives, no business objectives, uh, could be that they would want to expand uh, or grow or they want to in, uh, increase the revenue. So these are some kind of business objectives that they have. Just try to uh, align with them. That's it. There is nothing uh, great or specific that you need to focus on the business side of it. Just be in alignment with the uh, management. Satish, you can go ahead. I see one more question about uh, from the DG, DG expert, isn't it? Is in the how part of product management managed by engineering managers instead of APMs? 
Pravindi, how that's absolutely correct. Uh, so the how part actually is like what solution to be built. That's driven by the engineers, engineering managers. But the APMs, I've included APMs in the how part because ultimately they are responsible for executing it. So when they're executing it, whatever decision that uh, engineering manager takes, it's a decision on paper. Whether that is being implemented and put in life by uh, by the engineers, ultimately lies the responsibility lies with the APMs. So uh, in a sense, the how is decided by the engineering managers, but the responsibility of ensuring that the how is completed or closed, that loop is closed, lies with the APMs. Satish, uh, Satish yeah. has a question. Okay, may I ask a question? Hi, Satish. Hello, hi, hi Satish. Okay, I'm Adwar. Yes, yes. Okay. Please go ahead. The thing is, as per the psychology, it will state the not personal number to the two. First part of it. Mm -hmm. It is situation based. Number two, there is a Cano model which talks about the customer preferences changes radically. See, for example, if I see maybe some product you know, which is solving customer problem, right? Uh, maybe there is a tech company which is investing big or maybe they're giving a different solution because I'm providing one of the solutions, one of the possible solutions for a particular problem, not in you know, optimal solution, I don't know, right? And yes, this is the first question, okay? When the customer uh, preferences are changing dynamically, which can mm -hmm. model tells, right? And the, maybe particular time that is a requirement, but maybe down the lines, maybe two months or one month, the requirement might change. Or whatever the, you know, face a good to have or great to have may not be existing, right? How to go about it is the first question. Maybe I will ask the second question after this. Sure, 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 Dr. Satish. I'll uh, try to answer this question. I think it's a very valid question. So uh, even if you take B2C organizations or B2B organizations, the customers say one thing, but they do other thing. So in B2B also, when you try to talk to some companies and they go ask them the requirements, they'll say one thing, but uh, they'll do other thing. Even in the consumer side also, B2C side, there are so many consumers. You can't go, go and keep on asking everyone that what is your pain point? What do you want us to do? What do you want us to build? Now here lies the uh, uh, skill of the product manager. The product manager should basically read between the lines, like what? When you ask a user, what do you want? Obviously he'll tell a list of all reasons. But when you say, and uh, but when you see what is trying to do or she's trying to do, you see that there can be a difference between that. So ultimately the PMs need to understand what is it that inherently motivates or what are the inherent pain points which are not expressed explicitly by the consumer. Now that is an art that you could do by uh, talking to a few customers, or in a few uh, understanding or going through certain calls that you've received by your call center or uh, customer support or the tickets that have received. So once you go through the amalgamation of all these such activities, you know, you'll try to understand inherently what are the time to conceive or what are the time to uh, convey to us. On the outer surface, there could be many requests that they want, but inherently you need to capture that. That I think that is not something that is, uh, uh, understood immediately, but uh, over a period of time or by uh, by deep uh, consumer research, you would, uh, you would uh, definitely gain that. I think this is where PMs need to work or collaborate very closely with the UX teams and the user research team. The user research team along with the PMs, uh, we try to uh, uh, discover some uh, insights. I'll, I'll give some examples of my in my career also, how did we do this? So, um, at Zivame, uh, we were uh, uh, trying to solve uh, the problems of cancellation. So there are a lot of cancellations that happened on our platform because the users are not happy with the product. Now, when we go and uh, talk to the uh, customers, like when we see the responses that they give when they're canceling the product on the app, no, mostly they select other because they don't want to select specific reason. They just click on others and cancel the product. But when you we talk to them, but when we see the kind of patterns that are emerging from the cancellations, what we saw was a user when they are canceling, 
when they purchased the product no let's say they purchased a product of uh, size 32b for example but they've cancelled the product and later they purchased 32c or uh, from this we have seen that lot of users actually have done this after cancelling they moved and purchased another product and users of uh, bought a uh, purchased a product cancelled and bought the same product again uh, in some instances but at a lesser price because there was some discount so through this insight we have un understood that there are two reasons one that the user has found a better price after they have purchased that's why they are cancelling and again purchasing so we have given them an option to apply a discount even after purchasing that uh, if let's say you have found out a great discount or a deal or coupon you can apply post purchase also you will uh, refund back the other insight that we have got was users have a mistaken select a wrong size or they have not comfortable with that size and they have wanted to shift so for that what you've done is instead of cancelling you could change your size before the shipment of the product or before the uh, delivery of the product so these were insight that were not explicitly told by the consumers but we have to find out ways uh, for this we've got the ways from uh, understanding the cancellation data and seeing the post purchase data or trying to talk to some of our consumer customer support like why are they cancelling so this is what uh, uh deep consumer empathy means of uh, uh, trying to read between the lines and not explicitly see what the consumer is seeing that is uh, one more skill which uh, we need to acquire uh, dr sagesh i hope i try to answer your question yes i got it uh, the thing is uh, you are maybe the thing is realistically if i see something you know I did the maybe identify the issue and try to do the research and come up with the UAE way for whatever it is mm -hmm. uh, solution. Right? It is taking some time. Meanwhile, if something changed, customer requirement or some new product came, which mm -hmm. are not aware because I don't have control on the world, right? Some new product came, for example, in this instance, something came is very significant, which is you know disruption. Uh, then it is a total waste, right? Whatever the efforts I have done, that everything becomes waste. And the second thing is, there is a life period for every product, right? In what stage your product is based on that, your strategy will be different. The business strategy is different, product strategy is different. Right. Right. And uh, the product strategy, if I'm differing, I'm specifically talking about the product. If I'm talking about business strategy, I'm talking about, you know, the business and the value, whatever it is, profit, loss, whatever it is, right? These will not uh, talk to each other generally. <laughs> These are two distinct elements. Right, people right. will confused and say this is a strategy i'm different i'm a strategic mm -hmm. product leader something <laughs> right but this is the one, uh, one confusion which you need to you know, maybe probably try to clear absolutely i think that is a valid point because most of the uh product leaders don't think from the business point of view they confuse between the product strategy and the business strategy as i mentioned earlier you know, business uh, strategy basically tries to uh, solve the uh, why part of it the what what is need to what needs to be built to achieve that why will lie with the product mid level product kind of leaders uh, so that's where they need to uh, be in sync with the business goals business okrs what are the care is what is it being being driven so as you mentioned every product goes through different cycle initially a product or a company might be in the growth phase at that point of time the business wants to focus on growth adding new users they don't bother about the revenue or the contribution margin or the profit that they make so at, at that point of time the product also needs to align with them so optimizing for the growth maybe at a later point of time the business might uh, uh, value more on uh, the throughput that is the number of uh, bookings or the number of the revenue so for that in that situation the uh, conversion rate becomes important so the product needs to optimize on improving the consumer uh, conversion rate from uh, the first step to the last step so at each step maybe uh, as business matures they are more uh, the business is more interested in how do we uh, survive for a longer period of time at that part of time retention becomes more important so product needs to align with the business goals at each juncture understand what is that they are wanting and how what do we need to we need to build on the product side to achieve that business goals so both should not be in a uh, disunion thank you thanks dr One more question, uh, uh, not related to you. Uh, the thing is, uh, 
a lot of people are asking, you know, we are having a lot of options. So why pragmatic? The thing is how it is experiencing experience learning, you know, compared to the, you know, a lot of books which are available, a lot of materials available. Then how can you make this person, you know, from an ordinary person to maybe a product manager? There's a question, maybe Priyanka directly to you. Priyanka can answer, but I'll try to just give uh, one point from my side. I think, we, see, most of the books that are there actually are from the literature of from the Western world in product management. The literature from the Indian context is very minimal. I think that's where uh, product management can add value. Uh, yeah, Satish, you can yeah. reach out to us. Um, one of yeah. our team members can help you with that. Uh, right now, we'll yeah. just focus on like career and product management questions. Yeah, I think it's yeah. a valid point. I think it's, 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 you know, for example, the course with your product, right? Assume the course, what you are offering is a product. Why to, why to choose this product is the question, right? I have answers for this question, but I know a lot of maybe the, hello, maybe if you can answer you know in a different way, which will help the remaining team people to get a better credit. I told like um, uh, maybe I'll give a differentiation. I'm not supporting the pragmatic. Okay. The thing is uh, the 45 case studies which you need to do on your own are part of this course. If you do maybe at least four or five case studies on your own, probably you are having a better understanding any question, at least maybe 60 to 70 percent will be able to answer in a product management. If you do starting from a scratch to until GTM, right? that's one of the differentiation. Apart from this, the placement which you are talking about is the second one. And third one is people are asking some questions, you know, how this is a different uh, compared to others. Yeah, uh, so uh, Satish, as I told you, like we'll, uh, we'll take, we can take such questions. Please uh, reach out to us at admissions at the rate pragmatic leaders uh, dot io. You will get all your questions answered there. Uh, today, we'll just focus on like core product management questions from our mentor. So please reach out to us afterwards. We'll be able to help you. We can move ahead with next question that is uh, with Niveen. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Shekhar. Hi, Nivin. Hi. Uh, we just discussed about the three aspects of uh, product management, right? One is the technical side and the uh, user experience side and the business side. Uh, I'm a technical writer with uh, six years of experience. So I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm just a uh, new I'm a new learner. So uh, to start with the business side, could you please specify uh, some areas to focus on? Sure, I think from business point of view, it is uh, uh, if you can uh, pick up few 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 important concepts like um, um, for example, if let's say uh, reading a simple uh, balance sheet or or, or a profit and loss statement, so mm -hmm. PNL statement will actually will never be used in your career in product management. But I'm saying that because when you read a PNL statement, you will understand what are the profits, how does the revenue flow within an organization? Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, as a product manager, you are building a product and selling it to the end user, and you are a medium, or you are building a product, you are building a conduit for the customers to come to your platform and purchase your products. So you are the entry gate or the top level. Basically, in the PNL and statement, if you see, the revenue lies on the top. Mm -hmm. So from the revenue comes different uh, uh, additions and subtractions. But ultimately, you reach, you reach at the profit level. So at the subtractions level, there are the marketing costs, the costs that are required to uh, run an office or uh, run certain, uh, uh, the manage some people. So this will give you an understanding. If you read a PNL statement, it will give a very, very good understanding because uh, uh, at each stage of at each stage of the business, no? as I talked about earlier, uh, a product manager is trying to optimize one part of the uh, business problem. Mm -hmm. Let's say in the business uh, growth, early growth stage, you're focusing only on the top line, the revenue. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Whereas at the second stage, you're trying to optimize the cost side also. How do I minimize the cost at, at the same time increase the output? Uh, at the later stage, you're actually trying to optimize for a longer retention. Like how do I increase the repeats so that uh, not just the profit and loss, but also at a longer period of time, I have a, a good uh, uh, subscriber user base who, who could give me repeating recurring business. So if you study p &L, that itself will give you a very good insight of how a business operates and uh, will be a very good uh, starting point. Apart from that, you should also try to understand from some of the uh, uh, growth marketing or digital marketing terms that are very frequently used because as a product manager, you are in very close contact with your marketing teams. Now, for example, some of the terms like what is a what does CAC mean, cost of acquiring a customer? What does CLTV mean, cost uh, the customer lifetime value? Uh, okay, what is a retention rate? But these are some of the terms which are used by the growth and digital marketing team. That mm -hmm. also you need to understand. And uh, there are other operational terms also uh, that are very specific to the industry that you work upon. If you are in a e-commerce industry, then there are certain some uh, some specific nuances of business that you want to may, may want to learn. But uh, for a startup, I think understanding what are the terms which are used by the digital marketing team. One second is understanding a PNL statement that should be enough. Sure. Thank you, Shaker. That answers my question. Thank you. Mayuk, Mayuk, you can go ahead, please. Yeah. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi, Mayuk. Please go ahead. Okay. So I dropped a message uh, on chat. Mm -hmm. So I just want to have, I mean, just want to ask you the same question. So being yeah. a product manager, uh, user experience, uh, worked for four or five years in a tech tech uh, or uh, CRM company uh, mm -hmm. with no engineering background. How does it uh, how does it help uh, one get into uh, companies like Twitter, Google, or, or Spotify? Because they, I mean, no, like you know, finance companies, you know, you know, hire mostly engineers, right? So, mm -hmm. say for example, one has an MBA and uh, work for four or five years. So, how does it help? Or what does he uh, need to have? Definitely, Mike. I think I'll, I'll try to answer this question. Uh, by giving you an overview of what all types of product managers would be there in such companies, especially in Fang. So see, there are uh, some consumer-focused companies, uh, consumer-focused products, like the website or the apps that you see, Facebook, Instagram, etc., Spotify. And then there are internal-facing tools which are uh, used by the uh, internal teams like operations, customer support, engineers, etc. And then there are other uh, types of products that are uh, Mm, uh, vendors or B2B focused within Google or Twitter, etc. Like Google has some product which are built for the advertisers, for the small and medium businesses, for the enterprises, etc. So there are different products for different catering to different uh, consumers. The need for having an engineering background will arise only in products which are engineering or tech heavy especially for internal products. But for other products, which are not internal or uh, internal or tech heavy, you know, like consumer facing or the business facing, these are products, they hire, they do hire uh, PMs who have uh, a bent of mind over consumer empathy. So that's why you, in fact, you see people of uh, sociology background or even biology background being PMs in companies like uh, Facebook and uh, Google. And especially these are on the consumer and, and uh, user side. So as I mentioned earlier, if you play to your strengths of being a user experience uh, manager, so you have good chance of actually uh, uh, trying to uh, apply for consumer facing side of uh, products rather than the in internal facing or the business uh, facing products. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, that answers. Absolutely, I just uh, want to read it again. Again, yeah, see the product management function uh, we of, often get confused that we need to have technical bent of my technical uh, know-how, but technical know-how is not required at all. It is just to ensure that whatever you have in your mind, if you need to consider whatever is there that you consider in your mind needs to be uh, out there as a life product. To ensure that it is out there as a life product, you need technical uh, engineer support. That's all. If you are able to communicate with them whatever vision that you have, either through images or through a document or through uh, or through 
uh, any uh, prototype or a wireframe, that is enough. If they are able to understand your language, when I say they, the engineers should be able to understand your language so that they can understand your language and idea and translate into uh, a language which a machine understands. That's the only requirement that we need. Okay, okay, sure. Great, thank you, Mayup and Shekhar. Uh, we have another question from Ranjana. The question is, what is the biggest apprehension that potential employers have management background? Okay. Um, see, the apprehension would obviously be that uh, will the person be able to ramp up and uh, deliver? So that can be mitigated by uh, displaying the confidence that we have and uh, uh, empathizing and understanding uh, the employer, like what is it that they're trying to solve and giving them a picture or confidence that you understand the language and you are in a position to help them or solve that uh, pain point. I think that would assuage their uh, uh, apprehension. Thank you, Shastri, you can go ahead. Please ask your question. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, uh, thanks for giving a question. Uh, so here, I think before Mike has, uh, I think you explained uh, well in the Mike's question. So, uh, so my point is like, uh, so anyway, we'll be taking the support from the engineering team in a technical perspective of, uh, understood. But so, so those things will come only in the junior level or in the senior product manager because generally companies who are in the senior product manager level, there might mm -hmm. be some having an expectations like uh, by saying the uh, like uh, the uh, situation or any other uh, issue or any uh, want to go with any of the uh, item need to be uh, need to be enhanced. So how far this can be fixed? or suitable for the existing uh, framework or something and at least a light needs to be uh, needs to be presented by the product manager it seems i think so so do we, are we going to get this kind of situations when we are in the senior role or we or like only the junior roles uh, like associate pms or something like that so that they can take help from the engineering background and uh, try to explain what best what best can be done for in the, in this type of situations uh, sure, Shastri. I'll try to answer your question uh, by giving a, a background of how the how things operate at a senior level. So, at a senior level, basically, you are expected to you are owner of the product, and you are expected to ensure that the health of the product is always stable. And uh, when I say health, that there are no downtimes, there are no bugs, there are no live issues or any server down and something kind of an issue. And the conversion rates or whatever metric that are focused as a product owner is always uh, on the uh, positives. Now, there, there would be obviously some instances where uh, the metric would go up or down. When it goes down, obviously, uh, as a product owner, you need to be uh, aware of what is the reason for the metric going down. Now, there are multiple reasons for a metric going down. Let's say, for simplicity's sake, let's just take the assumption of the traffic has reduced. You are responsible for the traffic. For example, the traffic has reduced. There could be multiple reasons. Uh, maybe there was some competition uh, who was trying to give some discounts, or there was some uh, event that has happened, and because of that, the traffic had reduced. Or maybe uh, you've uh, seen that the traffic is actually reduced because of some kind of a bug which is in your system. Now, the responsibility of a PM ends there to identify the issue uh, through the help of data. Now, if you have identified that there is no uh, uh, external impact on the metric, it's only internal uh, uh, impact. Now, it is the responsibility of the engineering team to find out what has cost and what to, needs to be done to fix it and what is the time that needs to fix it. So as a PM, your role just ends that ensure uh, trying to understand what are the cause and effect for a given metric. So if a metric is moving up or down, what could be the reasons for that to identify with the help of data analysis and analytics 
And once you've identified the root cause, give it to the respective teams. If it is some issue with the technical team, you hand it over to the engineering team. If it is some issue with the uh, marketing or, or not enough being promotions being done, you give it to the digital marketing team. If it is some issue with the customer support, uh, they're not able to answer or they're not, they're not answering the questions properly, you give this and raise the issue to the CS team or whatever team that uh, it may be. So that's the uh, that's where the role of uh, uh, product manager ends. The product manager will never go and solve uh, hands on the problem. He just reports it to a relevant team to solve the problem. Okay. Thank you. Um, we have a question from uh, asked by user iPhone. Uh, so as a senior PM with experience in large B2B customers with legacy and complex products, how difficult will it be for such PM to transition successfully in B2C space? Any tips? Hmm. See, I think in uh, from legacy or P2P kind of products, no, the number of customers that you interact with will be in limited number, hardly in some uh, single or double digits. Whereas in B2C, the, the challenge or complexity is that you are having millions of consumers. In the B2B space, you can talk to, you can go directly and maybe dial in or meet them physically or in person and try to understand their pain points and come up with the requirement. But in B2C, that is not a problem. Mm -hmm. So then how do you solve that uh, problem? Like how do you identify the user's needs when there are millions of users? So that's where having a good uh, analytical skill will help you of uh, trying to see the clickstream data, of seeing uh, maybe what are tools that uh, PM uses in the B2C organization, be it Google Analytics or Mixpan or Local Analytics. Try to see the data, try to see the user's flow within the website or the app and try to make a sense out of it. What could be the reasons and what is the hypothesis for users stopping at each stage? And what is a critical stage? So if you, uh, when you move, actually when you do the study, you know, that will give you a very good uh, confidence and insights like uh, you understood the user journey. Now, back it up with talking to some of the users. Now you've seen the data of how the user journey happens within your website and the app. Talk to some of the users and also see some of the consumer uh, pain points raised in Play Store, App Store, uh, in your uh, customer support calls or the, the reviews that they've left on Google review, et cetera. These are the initial good starting points that you could uh, quickly gauge or try to understand what are the consumers time, trying to say in a B2C organization. From there, you build your own hypothesis and validate each hypothesis one by one uh, to prove or disprove and arrive at the right hypothesis or right problem, so problem statement to solve. That's the, that's the standard way a B2C product manager operates, unlike a B2B product manager operates. Yeah, uh, we have a question by Keshav. We can take this last question because we are short on time and then we'll just wrap up the session. Uh, so Keshav is asking how and what tactics to use to get the solution on time? That is a, a very open-ended question. I don't know what solution on time. And uh... Yeah, I think Keshav is not here. Yeah, maybe if you can repeat that question, Keshav, I can help you. Uh, no, he's not here, so. Okay. Yeah, so maybe we'll, uh, if anyone has any other questions. Uh, just one last. Yeah. If you can hear me. Yeah, uh, so say, uh, in the entire product, I'm given every trade as its tools, right? So even product has its own uh, tools of the trade. Can you, you know, uh, in your experience, which have been the best tools, you know, uh, phase-wise, from right from product development, product planning to, uh, you know, 
metric to understanding which uh, how is the retention and then you know finalizing the feedback and all which are the best tools that you have used and uh, if you can help us in some you know with some examples sure sure so i can think of few of the tools uh, apart from tools i would say more than the tools processes are important so if you have some good processes no then uh, that will be that will be enough for example i talk about the process and i'll tell which tool i had used for that process so the first process is uh, i'm talking about the b2c uh, product management since i've mentioned right that there will be millions of customers visiting your website and how do you make sense of that uh, uh, the, the the users who come into your website it is important to know the click stream funnel level data when i say click stream the moment a user lands on to the home page from home page obviously there will be the next step within the uh, website i'll give example of let's say flipkart you come to home page you select a category you select a product you go to checkout and then uh, you make the payment and then it's a confirmation page so these are the seven to eight steps that uh, you need to understand where is the user dropping where is the user dropping more and where is the user dropping less so i'll identify the exact pain point that you want to solve maybe the users are dropping more on the category page then you do a double click of uh, find find time to find out what are the reasons why are the users dropping on the category page to do this the good tool obviously are uh, uh, your click stream uh, funnel data of like you can use google analytics i personally like google analytics a lot uh, local analytics is also a great tool which will help you the second thing is uh, you know statistically uh, quantitatively that the the users are dropping or if the users are moving ahead at a particular page of Uh, page of the or screen of the app what you also want to see what is happening actually so you want to see some kind of qualitative data while the user actually is on that page so in here i've used few good tools like um, uh, user experia which is basically a video recording tool so this records the sessions when the user is on a specific page or app or a screen so when you find out a reason or when you find out a step that the users are dropping more what i do is i use the user experience uh, uh, tool uh, to see the clicks whether the users clicking are they scrolling are they uh, uh, clicking on any particular buttons so that will give me a sense of what is happening between that page qualitatively a uh, thirdly to validate whether my Uh, hypothesis. Let's say I've identified a pain point. I've built a hypothesis to test that hypothesis. What I do is I do a lot of uh, A/B tests. Now for A/B tests, there are different tools that uh, you could use. Uh, I've used a top tool called VWO to do a lot of A/B tests and to get the results and see if they are statistically significant or not. And based on the statistical significance, I'll uh, roll out the release. So these are the three tools that I use. Uh, as i mentioned one is uh, google analytics local analytics second is uh, user experia and uh, lastly bwo for ab experiment all right and for product planning if you can shed some light on that oh, for product planning i think uh, there's no great tool apart from uh, google sheet or uh, microsoft excel uh, frankly uh, th- there are other product tools yeah, also Uh, Jira is also a great tool because I'll tell why is it, why Jira is a great tool because uh, as a product manager you will get lot of feedback you will get lot of uh, ideas from different members you will get it from marketing operations higher management your engineering team everyone will be giving you ideas but some of the ideas are important most of the ideas are not important so you do not know at the outset which idea is important which idea is not important so you need to store all that. ideas or requests that you are getting of also you'll get a lot of requests in the end in consumers you need a place to store all this information i think jira is a great tool where you can segregate write down these ideas as a backlog and give a tag to it so that it will help you as a ready reckoner whenever you want to uh, do a sprint planning or or you want to prepare a road map you will have a ready made list of all the ideas that you've uh, You've got from different people, and you can do a product planning uh, with. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good answers.